Hello, welcome to The Olive Tree. I'm Julia Fisher and my guest is Nihad Salman, who today is pastor of the Emmanuel Evangelical Church in Bethlehem. Nihad, we're going to resume with your story. You were born in Bethlehem. You went to school, happy days you were describing in Bethlehem. Muslims and Christians got on well when you were young and it's you have witnessed a sort of a gradual separation of peoples as the political pressure and tensions have grown in the region. But you were very young when you went to a little mission and felt God really touched your heart and you felt that you were going to follow him no matter what. And that stayed with you. But you you could have left Bethlehem. In fact, you did leave Bethlehem. You went away to university, didn't you? Let's take you out of Bethlehem now. Yes, but uh, what is what happened in Bethlehem was important. Yeah, to uh, to that that brought me back to Bethlehem. You know. Yeah. You see, when I was sixteen, I heard about uh, you know the idea of uh, the harvest is great, the the labors are few. So I was praying, God send labors. God says, <laughs> put on my heart, why don't you go? <laughs> so I spoke to the missionary. I, I want to you know serve the Lord. Uh, she said, okay. With her husband, also uh, Paul and Gabby, they they really said, "Okay, now we want you to uh, st- uh, study. If if this is on your heart, you need to prepare for for the ministry. You have to go to Bible school." So they prepared for me to go to Bible school in Germany. So uh, I was preparing uh, the night before I left to the airport. My preparing my suitcase. My mother comes in and she was crying. I said, why, why are you, you have tears in your eyes. I will be back. She said, no, no, it's not because you're just leaving and I will not see you or see you. But because now I understand the vision that I have seen, what I have seen when I was pregnant with you. I said, what did you see? She said, when I was pregnant with you, I have seen Jesus coming in a, in a, like a chariot with fire. And he came in and he took that b- boy from me. From my, and he said, "This boy is mine. Put you in the chariot and went up to heaven." To, to heaven. So all the time, uh, I had this in my heart. I said, "Why didn't you tell me this before? I didn't know that." She said, "Because I was all the time thinking that Jesus will take you, which means you will die. I was always mm-hmm. afraid that he will take you to heaven." So I didn't want to say that so it will not be like a curse or something. But now I understand that he wants you to take you in the ministry. Mm -hmm. So for me, that became like, um, uh, now I made my decision to serve the Lord. And now he gives, he, he, he puts this vision in the heart of my mother. And she tells it to me one, one night before I go to Bible school to, to, to travel. And it's like confirming the calling. So I went out with this, and, and I, but also God put on my heart Bethlehem, to come back to Bethlehem. And so I studied in Germany, and, and all the time it was on my heart to come back. When I came back from Germany, and uh, I saw the need more and more. So I wanted to further study, just to make, you know, the brain a little bit, and uh, uh, Germany too much uh, <laughs> strict. I thought I, I should go to the States to uh, a little bit uh, get some, uh, <laughs> to, to make it some lean. <laughs> I got okay. married with my wife, Salwa, who I ser- when I served in a village called Aboud, I served there for a year practical ministry before I left to the States. So there the Lord put on my heart uh, this young lady who was serving in the church, serving the youth, serving the church, uh, cleaning, doing uh, without, uh, whatever. A long, uh, uh, that was another story. So we got married. Both of us left to the United States, studied their uh, graduate studies, did my MDiv, and, uh, the, and it was so tempting to stay in the States. Mm. Mm-hmm. All, sure. almost all of the my colleagues who 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 studied with me uh from india from romania from uh, stayed in the states and even they told me yeah bring children in the states and stay stay here i said no i didn't come to bring children in the states and stay i, I came just to study i'm going back because i knew i told my wife i said selwa if if we get children here 
in the States, we will be connected here. I don't want to be connected to the States. I want to go back. Uh, and it's tempting. But mm-hmm. we, <laughs> so all of our three children were not made in the United States. They were made in Bethlehem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we came back in 1991. Now, you say, when we came... You say- Can I just interrupt this? You say it would have been very tempting for you to stay, um, Nihad. There must have been a little part of you that realized if you went back to Bethlehem, you would have a a tough time. It would be difficult. Uh, It didn't come to my mind at that time. Really? All my mind was set on Bethlehem because my heart was already set. You understand? It's a different. I didn't see, with all the easy life, with all the good things, and I'm talking about the 80s and the beginning of 90s, which means uh, 89, 90, 91, in the States, it was so easy there to even stay there and and, and make life. And even there, I had even ministries that wanted, they were corresponding with Arabs and they wanted someone who writes Arabic to write them and correspond. Mm -hmm. And uh, ministries that called, I said, no, no, no. So I didn't even see it because my heart had fixed on Bethlehem and my wife too. She didn't even, we didn't even, we didn't even talk about it. We didn't even mention the idea of let's stay here. No, it was set. We knew what, what the Lord had on my, our hearts. But the, really the, 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 the shock, was when we came back and we were <laughs> we, we saw the difficulties as a uh, pastor as 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 uh, uh, you know uh, dealing with the people then <laughs> more things became harder you know when 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 we were back back so what were you expecting coming back because you'd been away for a few years by that time hadn't you germany and then america yeah. yes. had bethlehem changed a lot in that time uh, in that time, there was the first uh, intifada. I was not there. I, w- I, w- I left uh, 1986. The intifada, which is the uprise, started 1987. I came back in 92, 91, 92, the beginning of 92. Uh, and and the, the, there was a lot done in these years politically. And uh, lots of understanding of the how the society is built, and oh, sorry, and also how things were run. Well, yes, people uh, and I and, and some people had the idea of of immigrating. Yes, young people, families. Uh, the political situation was was not easy. The, the on the ground, also movement, uh, traveling, uh, it, many many things were difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I couldn't. You can. We could go into Israel with driving our car, go for, to Haifa, to Tel Aviv, to Jerusalem, come back. No, now I come back. You cannot even if you want to go into Israel, you have to have a permission. You cannot drive anymore. They take. Uh, so there was. Uh, a, 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 you know, a limitation on the movement. There was limitation of traveling. There was li- limitation. There was difficulties also in the in the economical situation. Uh, it was not easy, and people were more driven into the political arena. And now people are thinking of uh, of politics more than religion. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, they're thinking of of. Uh, Solution for our problems and is is politics. You know, we have to have uh, this solution, that solution, that. So, so hope was not in God as much as hope was in the situation, changing the situation, and so on. Yes, so, uh, it was. So, uh, you, <laughs> so you came back to a changed yeah. situation to establish an evangelical church, which was anathema in any case. <laughs> Uh, evangelical, just using the word evangelical was already uh, yeah. enough of a problem, mm. especially because uh, evangelicals uh, were taking, and especially after even the second intifada, which started after the year 2000, uh, there, there, uh, the idea of evangelical is, is were connected with, uh, with uh, Zionism. 
Mm. Mm. And it became like a political, uh, you evangelicals, you are traitors. Mm. Uh, and, and, and you, you know, uh, the whole idea of behind Zionism and so on. I don't know if, how much you know about it. I mean, I'm sure you do, but uh, it's a long story. It was story. complicated. <laughs> it's a long yes, story yes, and it's yes, complicated. Yes. It yeah. was difficult for you. It was messy. But you you just knew that you were sent back to do this. Nihad, yes. we're, going to, we're going to say thank you for this program and keep you here to make another program to share the story of how you actually started that church you and Salwa so thank you for joining us today and we'll be back with you next week the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish believers and Arab or Palestinian Christians living in Israel and the wider Middle East If you'd like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please visit our website, olivetreefund.org. Meanwhile, join me at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.